at our Barnegat Light Restoration Project, and this is a project we're extremely proud of for many reasons. The first is the cooperative effort that got us to this place. This is a joint effort between the Conserve Wildlife Foundation of New Jersey, Rutgers University, the United States Fish and Wildlife Service, the United States Army Corps of Engineers, and of course the Division of Fish and Wildlife. This project began on a cocktail napkin two decades ago by a man named Todd Pover who works for Conserve Wildlife Foundation. This is a dream that he had hatched to bring this site back to its formal glory where it hosted many pairs of black skimmers and least turns and piping plovers. So this project is particularly exciting for me. I've been doing plover, piping plover work for about 25 years and going back two or three decades this is one of the more important spots not only for piping plovers but we had large colonies of black skimmers and terns here. But over time, the uh, site got vegetated, more mature, uh, and those, the birds do not like that kind of habitat. A lot of people think that uh, our beach nesting birds like heavily vegetated dunes so they can hide from predators, but in fact, they're using their camouflage, they're hard to see, so they want to be out in an open area. And so as the area got vegetated, there was less and less use. And then over the, the last few years, we're down to just a couple pairs of piping plovers and oyster catchers left at the site. So essentially, we're trying to reset habitat here back to what we would call an early successional habitat. So something that's created from a storm that wouldn't have a lot of vegetation and be very suitable for these birds. It's been a dream, this project, for me for upwards of 15 years or more. And um, we finally got the chance to do it this winter. So in the early 90s, where we're standing uh, in Barnegat Light was, was pretty much water. Um, and then the Army Corps in the early 90s put in the, um, the jetty over there to stabilize Barnegat Inlet. And when they did that, uh, they, they sort of stabilized the natural coastal dynamics that were um, features of this site. So in doing that, all of this sand accreted uh, and then vegetation grew in this location. And so as part of the uh, mitigation for lost beach nesting bird habitat, to, to do that inlet, uh, the Army Corps was charged with providing some funding for um, restoring habitat or maintaining habitat in this area. So, we were able to do this project in two phases. The first step, which took place in the winter of 2018 and 2019, was to clear all of the vegetation out of this area. We ran out of time before the birds were coming back, and so we had our nesting season 2019. It was a wonderful success. Birds were here using the habitat, and they, it was clear that they, we had created something and designed something that they were enjoying. The second phase, which took place last winter, winter 2019-2020, is what you see here behind me. This is the pond feature of the restoration area. This is critically important for a species like piping plover. These birds are what is known as precocial. That means those chicks are hatching, and instead of the adults bringing food back to them, those chicks are responsible for feeding themselves. They have to be within a day or two of hatching, teeny, teeny, tiny little birds weighing the equivalent of about eight pennies, be able to get themselves to areas that have enough habitat of foraging available that they can put on weight and survive. Phase two of the Barnegat Light Habitat Restoration Project is to create a high quality foraging habitat. An area that's away from human disturbance, so here at the park, uh, there's a lot of visitors, especially between Memorial Day and Labor Day, that are uh, you know, traversing the inlet, walking, but those chicks really have a hard time getting to the foraging ponds that are over by the inlet side, and so the idea here is to allow them free access, human-free access, to this pond. And so behind me is, is the, the beginnings of the pond. Uh, this will be a five-acre, very shallow, less than two feet foraging pond with uh, a, a pretty wide edge of wet sand, which is what the chicks will then feed. Prior to this restoration area, any birds that nested along the sandy strip that existed previous to us, they would have to go out to the jetty to forage. Anybody who's visited Barnegat Light State Park knows how busy this area gets. For that tiny little chick to have to run back and forth between those pools was burning up a lot of energy and not allowing a lot of those chicks to make it. But here we are inside the restoration area. The area is fully fenced off and those birds can just sit 
and feed and get fat. And that's what we are looking for. We want birds to sit and feed and get fat. And that is in fact what we saw happen in 2020. Those two pairs both were able to hatch their chicks. They worked their way right over here to the restoration area. And we watched them feed exclusively in this pond. It wasn't until the birds were fledged, that means they're capable of flying and they're at the point where we feel like they've made it, that we saw them start venturing outside of the restoration area. But for the duration of that critical period when they cannot fly and are most susceptible to human disturbance, we saw them utilizing this pond. It was a spectacular success this year in 2020. We are now at the tail end of the 2020 breeding season. So most of our piping plovers have already headed south. We've even gotten reports of some of them on their migratory pathways. However, if you look behind me, you can see that many other species are utilizing this important area. Of course, gulls are here, but in addition to that, you can see some of our Arctic migratory shorebird friends are also utilizing this area. Any place that you can find along the coastline that does not have people on it, you are definitely going to see birds utilizing it if it has good foraging habitat. And that's what we're seeing at this pond. So in addition to the benefits that we're seeing to our endangered nesting birds, we're now actually seeing benefits to many other species that are passing through the area. They have these long migrations that they're basically going from the top of the planet to the bottom of the planet. And the Barnegat Light Restoration Area is now offering a safe haven for them and a place that they can continue to build their way as they make their way south. We're considering that another huge benefit of this project.